Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. We're investigating the fault on this 2017 Vauxhall Insignia today. And basically when it's running, the little engine light here is coming on. We can clear the fault code and it comes back on. It lasts about a day or two and then it comes back on. Uh, we've plugged it in with a snap-on diagnostic machine. And we've got three fault codes all relating to the knock sensor 2, the rearmost one. So we've got P11DC there, P220B and P22A7. All three codes come back after about a day of clearing them. So we're going to be looking into this fault now and just showing you the fix for it. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Um, throughout the video, if you check the description at any point, I put links to all the parts used and all the tools as well. The next step now, I'm just going to get the vehicle up in the air. I'll just show you where the uh, knock sensor 2 is located and um, just show you running through getting it out and replacing the sensor. Uh, so just coming underneath the vehicle, there is a few sensors in the exhaust and um, there's one up the top um, but, but coming here we've got the, the first knock sensor at the front here and a little bit after that we've got the vaporizer or fifth injector there and there's a temperature sensor um, in the just above that there and then coming a bit further back right to the back and this bit of exhaust here I've just sprayed a bit of um, penetrating oil on this ready for us to get it out but this rearmost one this is the knock sensor too you can just see it plugs in there uh, it's 22 mil bolt on it and just follow the wiring up it comes up there and they've actually got a bit like a little ecu part of the knock sensor that's why they're mega expensive but they're quite a common issue on these voxels now so we've got a new one to replace on this today and i'll just show you replacing that and then running through clearing the codes as well but Basically, all that holds this on, got two 10 mil, 10 mil nuts, and there's a little tab there, and then you can just simply push that up to get the connector off. Um, and I've got to also, just to replace it, you can just use a, basically a 22 mil spanner. We've got one of these little special tools. Um, it's actually for the fifth injectors on the Ford Transits or Citroen Relays. It's basically a 20, 22 mil socket uh, crow's foot. But it's just, it's nice and thick, so you can get a good bite on it. Obviously, you can just slot it over the loom there and drop it straight onto the, the nut. So it just makes it so uh, you can get good purchase on there to get it off. And just show you as well, looking at the new sensor here, there's the ECU bit of it. Um, if you check out the description below, I'll put links to all the part numbers and where you can get them from. But this is a the Vauxhall one that's just, just over 400 quid, I think the retail was on it. So a pretty wedgy bit of kit. But we'll get this um, we'll get this off now. Um, the only thing you want to check just before getting it off, just make sure. If, just take the connector off and just I've had this off already, but just make sure that it hasn't had any water in there, and that's why you've got problems. So but I'll just get this took off now, and we'll get it swapped over. Right, so that's the knock sensor removed now. All I used was just a half inch ratchet with the crow's foot there. So if you weren't using that, you could just crack it off with a 22 mil spanner. So um, just use a little ratchet, 10 mil, 
on a bit of an extension bar just to get in just for a bit of easier access really but um you can see on the sensor the only uh, other thing we have to take out is just a little there is a little clip halfway around as well just holding the loom back so um, but looking at the sensor itself it's a bit hard to you can't really fault anything with it to be fair i think they break down inside the actual ecu bit so um, but you can see in there it's nice and dry it's not had any water in there and rotted it or anything like that so um, i'm not going to strip any further so i've got a nice new one to fit on it tonight so um, but we'll just get the new one fitted back in and then uh, clear the codes and hopefully that should fix the fault and um, the only thing you need to really be aware of is when fitting the new one you always want to thread your sensor in first nip it up and, and then fit your ecu because otherwise you end up twisting all the loom so but we'll just get that get the new one fitted now uh, obviously with the new one there's just a little cap on there but it should come with some grease yeah it's got some ceramic paste on it already so and we'll get that fitted in and then just let you know the outcome just see on the new one actually comes with a clip belt onto it so. Right, so the new part's been fitted for a couple of days now. When we first fitted it, we took it took it for about a 20 mile road test. Everything was spot on, no fault lights come on. And uh, rechecked the faults when we got back. There was no faults recorded. Uh, left it for another day, give it another run. You can see now the engine lights off. And there's no, let me try focus on that to get it to come up, but no codes in coming back at all. So uh, it's definitely fixed the faults. So I thought I'd share the video with you all. Uh, it's quite an expensive fix, but if you have got that problem, I'm afraid you're probably going to have to fit a new uh, knock sensor. So thought I'd share the video with you all. I uh, hope it helped. If it did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.